Hi guys and uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, a little bit different video to what you're probably used to uh, on this channel. But I thought I would do um, a bit of a video around the Xbox One reveal. Uh, it's been a couple of days now and just let us, the, the dust settle a little bit and give you my thoughts uh, and opinions really on, on the reveal. Um, there's been a lot, a lot of stuff on the internet. There's been lots of YouTube videos. Um, lots of stuff coming out of the press, both positive and, and negative. And I thought I would just sort of chuck my, my piece in, into the ring, really. But also, I wanted to start a debate, really, a bit of a discussion. Because I know some of you guys are gamers. And uh, I know you've been watching it. I can, uh, you know, I've been speaking to some of you on Twitter and that type of thing. So it would be good to, to get your opinions as well and, and views on the, on the event. So before we, we get into it really, a bit of a disclaimer, um, I'm a PS3 user, uh, I've always been a PlayStation user, um, but that's not to say I'm not interested uh, in what else is going on in the gaming industry, and I've always had one eye on the Xbox 360 uh, whilst being a PS3 um, user, and um, I guess really when I think about it, the, the main reason I'm a, a PlayStation 3 user is mainly because of the people that I play with and, and my friends and etc. All have PS3s, so so we, um, you know, it makes sense that we're all on the same system. Um, until the euphoric day of uh, cross-platform gaming comes into uh, to play, then unfortunately that's that's the way it's going to be. So, um, with one eye on on the Xbox 360. There are a lot of things that the Xbox 360 does absolutely perfectly. A lot of things that I'm very envious of, and I wish Sony had really thought about the design of the, the, the PlayStation 3 uh, before coming to the market and user interface and the experience. You know, um, simple things like um, cross game chat and, and parties and. Um, Custom soundtracks and all those things that you guys, as if you if you Xbox users, take for granted. Um, but to be fair to Sony, they got other things correct. Blu-ray in the in in the device from day one and that type of thing. So there's there's pl plus and minuses, um, I guess. Um, but the the I guess the biggest thing really for me is that there's competition, and and competition. In an industry like gaming, is is only good for for us, for you, for me, the consumers, because it means that uh, the manufacturers, those that are providing the services, are there to drive innovation because they've got to keep on top of the game. They've got to, um, you know, be competitive when it comes to pricing, um, and so we've seen that this generation. We've definitely seen some innovation where. One buddy's one organization's made a move, and the other ones have to follow suit or try and come up with something a little bit different. So, it's in all our interests, really, that the platforms do well. Because if they don't, then personally, I think that Sony would probably sit on the lows a little bit, and the PS3 wouldn't be what it is now today. If we hadn't had the Xbox 360 and the innovation that, that it bought, and that's that's fact of life. But anyway, that's the current gen. Let's talk about the the next gen. So we've got the Xbox One reveal. Uh, as I said, it's been a couple of days, um, and you know, for me, it was a big event. It should have been a big event, and I know lots and lots of people engaged with it. So let's get into the details about the actual box itself. Uh, the hardware, you know, the hardware was, was to be fair, pretty impressive. You know, 8-core AMD CPU, 8 gigs of, uh, 8 gigabyte of, of RAM. Uh, there was no stated speed uh, of the RAM. I think it's probably where the PS4 has just got the upper hand a little bit because um, it's probably going to be DDR3 versus D DDR5 on the PS3. PS4, should I say. 500 gigabyte hard drive. Okay, Pl plenty of room it seems. They've added a Blu-ray drive, um, finally. So great for you guys that, that haven't got access to Blu-ray. Um, it's all there in one package. And they've had other things, USB 3.0, uh, 
um, etc etc and there's an improved connect uh, with 1080p recording and they talked a little bit about Skype and, and that sort of functionality so some great stuff in there um, and, and probably comparable to the PS4 there may be a few differences in between but really we're only going to find that out uh, further down the life cycle of both both consoles in terms of the design actually it looks pretty slick and, and I'd have to agree with most people that the way it looks doesn't matter too much you know you buy your console you get it out of the box and you think it looks great and, and etc but then you stack it on a shelf and it gets hidden away and you never really look at it other than to insert a game into the slot so um, it looked pretty slick um, but I guess the only thing for me was was the size I mean let's be honest it looked pretty big and you can only tell so much from 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 a video and some pictures and stuff but it it looks a fairly big device and uh, that might not seem like a big issue but but to me it looked like a desktop style PC it looked like a desktop style PC box that you know is okay if it was a desktop PC and you are on a desk and you have the room for a desktop style PC um, but I think it's going to cause a little bit of an, an issue um, and, I, and I'll, I'll tell you why really I mean for me I'm very fortunate I uh, I own my own house so I, I effectively have control of the living room um, although the missus might not agree um, so in my living room it's, it's all my gadgets and my toys um, so what on my TV shelf I have at the moment a PS3 I have a, a 5.1 surround sound uh, amp um, that delivers all my my audio from my Blu-ray from my games. Fantastic system. Um, I've got a, a, a TiVo style box uh, that delivers sort of cable um, t television, uh, Sky or Virgin or or, or whatever. Um, I also because of that I also have the router actually right next to um, that that cable box. And I also have a, a networked hard drive, uh, and I use that network hard drive to stream a lot of my content, my pictures, my music, um, my videos to the PS3 to display it on the TV, and it works. It works well. It's fabulous. I'm very happy. Now, at some point, that PS3 is going to get come out, and a PS4 is probably going to replace it. Now, if I had been impressed with the Xbox One there may have been an opportunity for me to have had a look at it but if I'm honest the size has been a bit prohibitive um, because of the size I realistically can't see where it would fit I would have to get rid of something or other to replace uh, with my Xbox One and uh, that's unfortunately not an option I and mean, you could argue you, you can always find space but um, it's a little bit diff difficult now now that's that's not too bad because as I said I sort of control the living room and I decide what I put in in that space but if you are a younger uh, person and you're into your gaming whether you're a, a child uh, or a teenager still living at home and you want the latest generation of console then you may only be confined to your bedroom potentially and, and, and what that means is you may not have that room and luxury for lots of devices and lots of um, large devices. Now, current gen, they both stand up. I'm talking both, I mean, PS3 and, and Xbox 360. You can both stand them up vertically. And, you know, I can see an environment or a scenario where, you know, you've got a dresser or a table of some sort in your, in, in your bedroom. Xbox stood up, PS3 stood up, and a TV. And great, it, it it you know, space la lack of space it works. Realistically, I can't see anyone standing that box, the Xbox One, vertically, because to me, and it is this is a early days. Don't forget, to me, it looks like if you did, it'd be sort of size of a a mid tower PC, and and then you're getting into a different kind of ball game really. Um, so that's just my my thoughts it looks a little bit big a little bit bulky and then you've got the the added piece of the connect camera which again is quite a big thing in itself but anyway it looks quite nice 
and I'm sure if you've got the room it will slot in really nice so that's a little bit about design in terms of the user interface they they talked a lot about it and I'm not going to go into all the detail about the TV reports and the stuff that they're going on about because let's be honest they labored far too much on television and partnerships with organizations that are delivering content that are you know cable providers and all that sort of stuff when um, I would estimate that probably a good 80% of it is probably only relevant to US territories anyway and and uh, and, uh, and if it's not then then great but that's the bonus I was talking about earlier that's the added bits that you know this is a great games console and there's some added bits on top of it um, so the focus is a little bit too much on that for my liking um, but in terms of the UI, very impressive. You know, you've got Minority Report style shifting of, of the user interface, um, transition between um, menus, and that that style of thing. So uh, really, really impressive. Impressive um, with a connect control, and then they even demonstrate the voice control. Um, all all good. Um, I guess the only th issue I've got around that element of it is they have now come out and said that. Excuse me, I always, always have to have time for tea. They've now come out and said that uh, the Connect always needs to be connected. Um, and that doesn't sit right with me because, you know, regardless of the space, you know, I talked about that scenario in a bedroom that actually you probably don't have the, the room for the extra camera and, and that, that sort of thing. But in the living room, you know, it's the sort of thing that for me, as a core gamer, as a hardcore gamer, I would perhaps pull out every now and again when it's Christmas or on a bit of a party and you want to get those social you know casual games out to to play with family I don't want it always plugged in and I certainly don't want it always watching me which is another rare a fairly creepy comment that was made that it's always watching you so it's always effectively on and listening and um, you know doing things with the system uh, that doesn't sit right with me and call me old-fashioned but I don't like that but I guess the other thing is somebody mentioned you know what's stopping um, your girlfriend walking in and saying that Xbox off and that's it but from what I understand they'll probably negate that by having uh, recognition with your specific voice so anyway that's the UI stuff that's the design stuff Let's go on to the games. Now, this event should have been about the games. I wanted to see lots of games, some you know, old franchises perhaps rebirthed, new franchises, new IPs, some really impressive gameplay footage. I wanted to see all that smashed in my face, really, you know. And unfortunately, they just didn't do it. I'm not going, going to labour on about the TV piece, but they, they did spend far too much time around television. And the, the, the stuff they showed on the games was was a lot of it was pre-rendered. It was CGI stuff. It's the sort of stuff that we we saw in the old days with the, the current gen and you know the Killzone trailer, for example, where people were blown away. But actually, it's not in-game footage. So I really want to see some some in-game footage. Excuse me. Um, we did see a little bit of the, the COD stuff, um, which which okay, yeah, great. You can jump over walls and stuff now. But any, anyway, um, I guess the only saving grace in that area is is E3, and let's let's be honest, um, E3 is around the corner, and I'm I'm confident in in both parties that there's going to be a, a, a wealth of games coming out, and we're going to be blown away by the games, and, and and all this other stuff might not matter because you might actually think you know what it's still a great system, and I'm still going to get it. But then whilst we're on the subject of games. I have to mention the pre-owned situation. Um, this might take a little bit of time, but it's a bit of a confusing situation at the moment. So, I guess fundamentally the issue with pre-owned -pre system is that fundamentally Microsoft want you to buy your game, your disc, your physical media from a store, from an online retailer, wherever, pop it into your device, and at that moment in time, will install the entire game on your hard drive. The entire game, 
not just a mandatory five gig, six gig install, the entire game. And that's great for convenience because you can take the disc out, you don't need to keep it in, and you can flick in between your games and your downloaded games and the games that you've installed from physical media, and it's great, that works. But the minute you do that, the minute you make it into a system like that, which is effectively how a, a PC uh, traditionally has worked, then you're going to be faced with the question around DRM. What is stopping me taking that disc, installing it on my Xbox One, taking it to my friend's house, install it on his, and my other friends, install it on theirs, and then everybody's got the same game, and you know what, if we all paid a few quid each, it'd cover the cost. So, they've had to introduce DRM. No doubt about it. The minute they decide to install the, the whole game onto the hard drive, as meant they've got to find a way to, to control those installations. And the way they've done it, um, when you look at it, is, is probably the only way you, they're going to be able to do it. Um, and the, the current situation is this. And, and believe me, it keeps changing. So... Um, Microsoft might come out in a few days, in a week, at E3, and they might clarify the whole situation. But as it stands, you buy a game, or I buy a game, I install it, I play the game. My friend says, can I borrow that game? Sure, you can borrow that game. I take the game to his house. If, if I log in with my login as an Xbox Live user, we can play that game no problem we can play as long as we want as long as I'm not connected to my Xbox one trying to play that game at home at the same time for him to log in and use his Xbox Live gamer tag he's gonna need to pay a fee and effectively we are being told that that fee could be the full price of the game and I understand why now thinking about it it's got to be the full price because you buy a game i install it i give it to my friend if it was only two three pounds then we could have split the entire cost of the the game plus the two or three pounds or dollars you know and we could have both had a game for sixty dollars between us or you know 40 50 quid between us and we could have split the difference and we could both had the same game um but that's not the case. They they so to, to to negate that, to stop that, the guy that I then pass it to has got to pay a full price activation on that game. Um, there's talk about once he does that, it will deinstall from my system and will no longer be available. And if all that is true, then theoretically there is no pre-owned market. For Xbox One because I am not going to be able to take my game into a store get them to give me some value for it if the person at the other end has got to take buy the game physically off them and then pay the full price for the game they'll just buy the full price of the game so I'm left with a game that I can't trade I can't get any monetary value out of and by the way it's eating up storage on my 500 gig hard drive and that leads me on to the other issue um, 500 gig is not a great deal it, it, it is on the face of it but it isn't a great deal if every game you purchase has to be installed in its entirety current gen games uh, and, and blu-ray discs you know they've got a capacity of either 25 or 50 gig now current gen we're pushing the limits of 25 gig potentially next gen i'm expecting that these games are going to get more complex they're going to have more detailed textures they're going to have more information more data i think we're going to be pushing on that 50 gigabyte limit on a blu-ray drive i really do and if that's the case and i'm not talking necessarily from day one but maybe two years into the life cycle if that's the case then realistically you're going to only be able to have 10 games installed at any one time. And 10 games installed at any one time is not a lot, really. And that's not even considering any downloaded games you've got, 
any indie game style games you've got from Xbox Live, any media you've got on there, because let's be honest, you you might want your music on there, some photos, some music uh, movies, but you know, any these games have also got game data patches. You know, in this this generation, we've seen it. There's always going to be a patch, an update, a one gig, a two gig update. There's always going to be that. So you add all that on top, and what you're left with is um, a very, very small storage limit. And that wouldn't be an issue. It wouldn't be an issue because surely you could replace the hard drive. You know, no problem. Pull out the 500, go and buy a 2 terabyte, 3 terabyte drive, in you go. We're happy. That appears not to be the case. At the moment, as it stands, you can't replace the hard drive. So for me, 500 gig is not enough. It's not enough. And um, I guess the, the other thing about that is you can pretty much guarantee if it isn't enough, they're going to be bringing out a one terabyte version, a two terabyte version maybe, three terabyte in the future, who knows? Because it won't take long for people to fill up those those hard drives. And we're talking about consoles that are going to have a life cycle of, you know, potentially six, seven years, eight years, nine years maybe. It's, it's nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough at all. So I think the, the, the final piece that I wanted to talk about was always online. This always internet connection required that was rumoured to be part of the the new Xbox ecosystem. And, and actually they've turned around and said it doesn't always need to be connected. Now that is true, but technically it's not correct. And there are several reasons for that. Firstly, when you buy a game out of the box and do that install, as I said, you need to authenticate that game against your user ID, your Xbox Live Gamer Tag. And to do that, you're gonna need an internet connection. So you're gonna need an internet connection when you physically buy and install the game. Okay, now that's not too much of an issue. Not too much of an issue, but what they've since said, and what Microsoft has since said, is that it will check, or Xbox Live will check every 24 hours that you still have that game, you still have authentication to play that game, and that you haven't passed that game to your friend down the road who's logged in and installed it and tried to, to obviously play it that way. So effectively, you need to have the console always connected, kind of, every 24 hours. It's pretty much always connected. And that, again, it doesn't really sit right with me. Um, we could get into all these scenarios, but your internet goes down. And it does. Your internet go, can go down. It can go down for two days sometimes. It, it happens, you know. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people in America who are in rural areas that do not have a consistently good internet connection. And if it goes down for two days, three days, whatever, then you can't play your games. Full stop. You can't play them. Because at some point, there's going to be an authentication that's required to make sure you can still play that game. And if it can't make that connection, you ain't going to be able to play it. Single player, nada. Any of it. So, that can't be right. Surely that can't be, can't be right. But as it stands, that's what we're being told. So, really, that's just my my thoughts and uh, and opinions. And I, and I know, and I know it sounds very negative. And I know you, you there's going to be some comments that you were Sony fanboy and all that. This is this isn't anything to do with that. I really really wanted the Xbox One to come out with something really innovative, really impressive, something that would really make Sony think, oh boy, we've got to up our game. And I don't think they did that. I might be wrong, but I don't think they did that. Some of those things that I've mentioned, um, I think are enough to stop people buying an Xbox One console. Not everybody, You'll, there'll still be a large portion, I'm sure it'll still sell well, but if in a position 
where we've got two consoles come to launch at roughly this similar similar time you have potentially got the opportunity to steal some of the users from the other um, competitor and uh, for me Microsoft have failed there I on the face of it I, I won't be going down that route but only if Sony don't follow suit so let's be honest Sony have been a bit quiet on some of these things as well and um, their reveal was was different there was there was a lot of a lot of gaming in there it was very centered around core games which which was great um, but some of this information is probably yet to come out and we may find that Sony decide to follow suit and that uh, pre-owned games will also require a fee um, how they do it I don't know um, if they don't do a mandatory game install it's still feasible um, that you could trade your game in and actually the person buying it would only have to pay a few pounds a few dollars to activate that game and that wouldn't be a massive issue in much the same way the online passes work now uh, I don't think that would be a big issue it would mean the cost of used games for the consumer would go up uh, but not not by a great deal and that would still keep a thriving news market going and I think I think the big issue really is that what Microsoft have underestimated and I'm hoping Sony haven't is how many people actually use the used game market to fund future game purchases you know you've had a game for a few months you've played it to death a new game comes out you trade that game in and it helps fund for the new game so if you haven't got that then if then you are potentially impacting the sale of any new software and that could have a big big impact and I think that Microsoft will underestimate that impact whether or not this is true for Sony I don't know I really don't know at this time I'm just hoping I'm really hoping Sony stick to their guns and if they're clever about it I can see a lot of people that are using an Xbox who think you know what now I don't want to be paying extra for some of these services I don't want to be paying full price for a used game it doesn't make sense and I'm not gonna be able to afford it and if Sony are clever about it they've got a real opportunity to capture a lot of that market so I guess we'll see obviously this is early days and uh, you know I'm excited I'm sure everyone's excited for the next generation and uh, but I do believe that Microsoft have handled this pretty pretty badly and uh, it's gonna need a lot a lot of focus in, uh, in E3 and they're gonna have to do a good PR job to spin this and turn it around uh, it might even need them to go back to the drawing board um, if it were me you know forget installing all your games on a hard drive just install part of it have the option to install half the game to speed it up and then you could still have this situation where it's okay because you need the disc in order to play the game so you can then trade that game in and not think or fear that you know somebody's gonna have to but purchase a, a fee at full price so I think that's it I'm sorry it's a long video there's a lot to get through um, please please I want to know what, what what do you guys think there's a lot of buzz around this at the minute let's jump on it let us know what you think uh, can they turn it around can can Microsoft come out with something in uh, e3 that's gonna make you think otherwise or are you guys thinking it's got to be a ps4 it's I've, I've read most people or some people are thinking it's got to be a PC so obviously people are thinking about things now uh, what are your opinions let me know in the comments below I really hope you like the video uh, if it proves successful then I might do a few more of these probably not as long to be fair um, hit that like button that's gonna obviously show me that that, that you do like the video and uh, we'll see you all in in the next one cheers guys see you soon